Attic antennas. I built a good one. It was an inverted L with some unusual aspects, which I fully described in the YouTube video, Attic Antennas, Are They Worth It? I strongly suggest that you watch this video again, as it contains a lot of good information, especially about the use of a counterpoise. I tried dipoles in my attic, but the inverted L seemed to work the best. And while the system that I did have worked pretty well, I wanted to make it better. I removed all of the old antennas from the attic, but kept the feed line, chokes, and tuner for the new system. And especially I kept the counterpoise system, which I think is essential for an efficient inverted L attic antenna. Specifically, I wanted to add 75 meters, I wanted to improve 40 meter performance, and most importantly, I wanted to have a reasonable impedance match so that I could easily match all the bands on all the frequencies. Some of the impedances on that first inverted L were quite high, and my MFJ auto tuner would strain to find a match on some frequencies, and there were a few that were just out of range of the tuner. I was after better efficiency, and as we all know, there's no substitute for length on the lower frequency bands. So step one, was to add length for 75 meters to the maximum that I could get in the accessible area of my attic. That gave me just over 40 feet, about 17 feet more than the old antenna. I did extensive testing with this setup, but just was never satisfied with the results. Sure, it worked, but an attic installation is already compromised with low height to the ground and everything in the attic around it. I could have added a coil but I wanted to squeeze every bit of efficiency out of my system that I could and keep the losses to a minimum. I simply needed more wire length for 75 meters. After a lot of thought, I figured out a way to extend the antenna wire into an area of my attic which wasn't accessible, especially for a senior citizen. I went to the local home store and bought two 10-foot lengths of 3 quarter inch plastic pipe, a coupler, some elbows, a conduit clamp and some nylon cord. I glued the elbows on one end of the first 10 foot section with the cord inside and the antenna wire attached to a loop outside. I slid that on top of the ceiling joists and insulation through an opening, adding sections and cord until I had the full 20 feet pushed in. The conduit clamp was nailed to a joist to hold everything in place so it couldn't move. I tied the ends of the cord together with plenty of slack so that I could pull the antenna wire in and out as needed to make length adjustments. You could use this method to get an antenna wire end into almost anywhere in the attic. I added and replaced radials, which really is super overkill, but I had the wire, so why not use it? I would suggest using no less than 16 and preferably 32 radials. Improvements beyond that number are relatively small. But, more radials are better than fewer, so stretch them out wherever you can. Then the testing started. I pruned the length numerous times. Try as I might, I simply wasn't able to find that sweet spot. Yes, my antenna tuner could find a match on most frequencies, but not all frequencies. I thought about adding an unbalanced to unbalanced transformer to bring everything in range of the tuner, and that would have worked, but I decided against that as I was trying to avoid adding another component into the system. Remember, I'm going for maximum efficiency. I was hoping there might be another way to solve my problem, so back to the internet I went for more study, and I read lots and lots of articles and saw lots of YouTube videos. And I began to wonder if a multi-element inverted L might solve my problem. And while I found lots of information about fan dipoles and multi-element verticals on the net, I couldn't find a good example of a multi-element attic L configured anything like mine. So, I was on my own. Well, if antenna experimenting is part of the fun of ham radio, boy did I have a lot of fun. My first task was to set up an easy way to add wire elements for testing. So back to the home store where I spotted plastic electric wire fence posts. Just cut off the bottom end and attached them at strategic points along the antenna line in the rafters. They work great. 
They're easy to put wire in and out. If I were going to do an inside fan dipole, this would be the way to do it. I started experimenting with additional quarter wavelength elements and voila! Here was the answer to my quest for lower SWRs on all the bands. I tried a lot of different combinations and finally decided on the three element design shown here and I have been very pleased with the results. As part of my testing, I found that even single quarter wave elements at resonance weren't one to one SWR due to the mutual coupling and the proximity to the ground in my attic. I suppose you could try to install a quarter wave wire for each desired band in your attic and if your coax to the shack was a really short run you could probably use the tuner in the rig and get pretty good efficiency. With my long coax run to the shack the auto tuner at the feed point was needed to avoid coax power losses and to give an easy and efficient one-to-one -one match on every frequency. I measured the impedances and the center band SWRs with the MFJ998 tuner. As you can see, these are all fairly easy to match. Interestingly, the impedance changes out to the band edges are fairly mild too. I believe that what I built is the most efficient 75 to 10 meter installation I can make in my attic. Antenna theory would seem to indicate that 20, 17, 15, and 10 meters would be rather non-directional and use principally the high current vertical portion of the antenna to radiate at low angles, while the 40 and 75 meter signals would have less low angle radiation and mostly near vertical incidence sky wave radiation. My on-the-air operation with this new antenna seems to confirm these radiation theories. Of course, with all the stuff in my attic and the angles of the wires, it would be nearly impossible to model this attic antenna accurately to determine the radiation characteristics. So, who knows what the radiation patterns really are. But, hey, it works and probably makes the most of my compromised situation. So hopefully, this gives you some ideas for your attic. And remember, there's no rain, wind, or sunlight to affect your antenna in the attic. So whatever you put there will stay there. I later added a 500 watt solid state linear amp to my system. I get a little interference on some frequencies to my in-house Wi-Fi system, but other than that, no bad effects and the amp gives the transmitted signal a nice boost. So my conclusion is to give some attic antenna ideas a try and this idea is just one of them. Attic antennas really are worth the effort. I hope this helps. 73's and good luck with your project.